to position the machine. First ensure all of the adapters and stabilizers are removed. Move the first dynamometer stop to position G on the white scale. Now move the second stop to position M on the green scale. Collect the adapters and stabilizers for this position. For knee flexion and extension we will need the knee stroke hip pad and the knee hip adapter. These are often left attached to one another. The contralateral limb stabilizer is an optional part used to limit the movement of the limb not being tested. The lumbar cushion is also optional and is used for comfort when patients or subjects require lumbar lordosis support. Now adjust the chair rotation. Lift a locking handle and rotate the chair. For the left knee rotate the chair to 40 degrees on the black scale. Ensure both locking handles are pushed down to secure. To set the chair back angle lift a locking handle and adjust the chair back. For the knee, adjust the chair back angle to 85 degrees. Ensure both locking handles are pushed down to secure. The chair foreaft is altered by raising either locking handle, then slide the chair bottom forwards or backwards. For the knee, adjust the chair foreaft to position 15. Lower the locking handle to secure. Set the chair back translation by winding the handle. For the knee, adjust the chair back translation to position 15. Set the seat to the up position by lifting and releasing. Now set the dynamometer tilt. Release the locking handle then change. For the knee, adjust the tilt angle to 0 degrees. Lock by tightening the handle. The dynamometer height and rotation are adjusted together. Lift a locking handle to release. For the left knee rotate the dynamometer to 40 degrees on the black scale. Whilst also adjusting the height to 8. Ensure both locking handles are pushed down to secure. Finally position the monorail by pressing the kickboard and sliding the chair to position 27. Now install the knee hip adapter. To use the knee hip adapter place the adapter into the long end of the input arm. Pull the locking pin to allow the adapter to fully enter the arm. Tighten the locking handle to secure. The position of the knee hip adapter can be read off the lower edge of the input arm, as can be seen here. Top tip. When applying the adapter for knee tests or exercises, start by setting it too high, as it is easier to lower onto the ankle. To attach the knee hip pad to the knee hip adapter. First choose to use either the long or short end. The different lengths account for TBL offset. Press the retaining button on the knee hip adapter, then slide the pad into position. If required insert the contralateral limb stabilizer into tube 2. Ensure the stabilizer is facing the limb not being tested. Pull the locking pin to adjust for height then secure with the screw handle. Once the norm is positioned, ask the subject to be seated on the chair. Ensure the chair back translation is correct for this subject. Adjusting this has the effect of altering seat bottom length. This ensures the thigh is adequately supported without impinging the posterior knee structures. Adjust the back translation until there is a gap between the calf muscle and the seat. A two finger gap is normally sufficient for up to 100 degrees of knee flexion. To use the contralateral limb stabilizer simply place the limb not being tested behind the pad. Now attach the thigh strap to the leg to be tested. Top tip. Subjects prefer this strap tight, however, an overly tight strap can affect the results. Pull the strap to tension, but do not lever into place. 
the contralateral limb stabilizer, lumbar cushion and chest straps are all optional in knee testing. To use the lumbar cushion position the subject first, then, apply the lumbar cushion behind the subject and the lumbar lordosis. To use the chest straps first place both arms through the loops. Then clip the straps together using the clasp. Tighten the upper straps until the waist sections are above belt level. Now tighten the waist straps keeping the clasp centrally on the waist. Note well. Using the chest straps and contralateral limb stabilizer will affect the results obtained. Hence, it is key to be consistent throughout and with tests. Next adjust the monorail, so that the shin will contact the calf pad in the center. As can be seen here the shin is not hitting the pad centrally. The calf pad could be turned to adjust for the tibial offset, however, moving the monorail is usually sufficient. Adjust until the shin contacts centrally. Now the axis of rotation needs to be set. The axis for the joint needs to be directly opposite the black dot on the input arm. The axis of rotation for the knee is the lateral femoral condyle, or the lateral joint line. The chair fore aft, and the dynamometer height may need adjustments to achieve the alignment. To position the calf pad on the shin, start by maximally dorsiflexing the foot. Then adjust the pad until it hits the top of the foot. Secure using the strap. This position is consistent, and will not limit the movement of the ankle. To check the axis of rotation and the position of the pads, hold the calf pad next to the shin. Then extend, and flex the knee manually. If the pad rubs up and down the shin the axis of rotation is wrong. Release the calf pad, and reset the axis of rotation. During the movement the subject should be encouraged to hold the fitted handles, as this has been shown to optimize results.